good morning guys and welcome back to my channel we're about that breaking cycles life <sighs> another thursday thank you god <laughs> you know when i come here it actually makes me grateful that i can actually come and say it's another thursday or it's another sunday right it makes me really grateful that I can do that. And this week, for Bible study, we're going to start. Actually, it's a very, very, very long chapter. You know, the chapters of Genesis are really long. And I think it's going to be split into three parts. And I'll make them very precise or concise, I should say. So three parts according to how it's sectioned in my Bible. This week we'll do Jacob flees from J from Laban. The next week we'll say how Laban pursues Jacob, and then we go on to how Laban's covenant with Jacob was formed. All right. So yeah, read with me. It says, you know as. I don't usually do this. I usually pray in my heart, but I, I feel inclined to pray. So let's pray before we get in. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for life. We want to thank you for your blessings and your mercies that you have bestowed upon us this very day, this very morning. And may we not underestimate the fact that you have given us life. Lord, I pray for all those who are hurting at this time. You see each and every one of your children. I pray that you will just sit by them, stand by them, and reassure them that you are with them regardless of what is happening. And Lord, may they come to an understanding that it's not because of you, but because of sin and because of the evilness of this world, why we suffer, but that and that in the end you will triumph and we will have a safe life with you may we continue to submit to your will each and every day and may father that your holy spirit continue to transform our hearts so that we may see you in a glorious light we may we, we may want you as our friend and we may cherish every single moment we have with you may we communicate with you in all that we do may we Regardless of how angry we are, how sad we are, may we look to you for comfort. And Lord, continue to hold our hands even when we are pulling away from you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, guys. Okay, let's go. The first subsection is... The first subsection is... Um, now Jacob heard the words of Laban. The first subsection is Jacob fleeing from Laban. So remember last week we were speaking about how um, Jacob basically, now Laban basically, last week and week before, uh, we were speaking about how Laban basically deceived his, his son-in-law, right? And gave him Leah instead of um, Rachel, his love. And then now they have kids, they're fighting over who has kids, da da dee da da da. And now they, and now Jacob is like, you know, it's time to leave. And even when he wanted to leave, Laban did not want him to leave. So here we are where he's planning this whole route of escape um, away from Laban. And it says, um, Genesis 31, it says, now Jacob heard the words of Laban's son, saying, Jacob has taken away all that was our father's, and from what was our father's, he has acquired of this wealth, all of this wealth. And Jacob saw the countenance of Laban, and indeed it was not favorable toward him as before. Then the Lord said to Jacob, Return to the land of your fathers and to your family, and I will be with you. So Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field, to his flock, and said to them, I see your father's countenance, that it is not favorable toward me as before, but the God of my father has been with me, and you and you know that with all my might I have served your father. Yet your father has deceived me and changed my wages ten times. 
for God did not allow him to hurt me. If he said thus, the speckled shall be your wages, then all the flocks bore speckled. And if he said thus, the streaked shall be your wages, then all the flocks bore streaked. So God has taken away the livestock of your father and given them to me. And it happened at the time when the flocks conceived that I lifted my eyes and saw in a dream, and behold, the rams which leaped upon the flocks were streaked, speckled, and gray spotted. Then the angel of God spoke to me in a dream, saying, Jacob and I said, Here I am. And he said, Lift your eyes now and see all the rams which leap on the flocks are streaked, speckled, and gray spotted. For I have seen all that Laban is doing to you. I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed the pillar and where you made a vow to me. Now arise, get out of this land and return to the land of your family. Then Rachel and Leah answered and said to him, Is there still any portion or inheritance for us in our father's house? And we are not considered strangers by him, for he has sold us and also completely consumed our money. For all these riches with God, which God has taken from our father are really ours and our children's. Now then, whatever God has said to you, do it. Then Jacob rose and set his sons and his wives on Carmel's, and he carried away all his livestock and all his possessions which he had gained, his acquired livestock which he had gained in Padan Aram to go to his father Isaac in the land of Canaan. Now Laban had gone to share his sheep and Rachel had stolen the household idols that were her father's. And Jacob stole away, unknown to Laban the Syrian, in that he did not tell him that he intended to flee. So he fled with all that he had. He arose and crossed the river and headed toward the mountains of Gilead. I think the highlight of this is God, and we'll see it reoccurring in in other Bible stories where God will remove you from your enemy's camp. And not enemy in this case, but you know, it's not where God wants him. And since he actually did act in defiance to um, or against Jacob, could be an enemy in a, in a sort. Yes, your family members can also be your enemies. I do not think that that's something to learn. Do not think because they are family, it means that they have your back 100% of the time. They are humans, they are fallible. It means that they can make mistakes. And yes, sometimes, sometimes that mistake is towards you, their family member. It's just the truth. I cannot help it. It's just the truth. Right? Um, so that's lesson number one. <laughs> and the second one is God... It doesn't matter how much of a sinner you are, if you have started to walk with God and you're on a journey with Him, He will defend you. That's the type of friend that we all need, and that's why we should all turn to God because, in our fallibility as humans, we don't necessarily do that. Actually, I am watching Grey's Anatomy at this moment, right? Um, because, like, the medicine. And if you know Christina and uh, Meredith, or everyone, Christina, Meredith, Izzy, um, Karel, and at this point, O'Malley is there. They have, they have such a strong friendship group that they argue one minute and then they're back to being friends. And I was relaying that to one of my friends yesterday. I'm like, this is friendship. You can argue so many times, but you're not going to give up on each other when you need them or when they need you because that is what friends do. Friends argue you are completely different human beings, right? And you basically will knock heads at one point, but the love you have for them or the respect you have for them will cause you to still break your back for them, right? And I love their friendship that um, in that movie, not movie, series. Yeah. And this is the kind of friendship that God portrays to us on a daily basis, right? 
if we are willing to follow him. And even when we're not following him because he he reigns mercy. He's merciful to the just and the unjust, right? For those people that are walking around and blaspheming against him, the fact that they have breath <laughs> to walk around and blaspheme against him means he is being merciful towards them. He is granting them mercy. Another day, he's been long-suffering. He's being patient so that they have another opportunity to turn and come to him. That is a friend, right? The bestest friend you could ever have, and that is Jesus, right? And then um, that is what we see here. Jacob was a deceiver, and then he got deceived. And still God is saying, you know what? Come and take all that you need to take and come. He will bless you. He will bless you accordingly. Um, you know, he usually says take the spoils of the people. I don't think you should have stolen, but in this sense, you know, again, maybe he's acting out of his carnal nature once I get to um, take, right? And then Rachel, no, he actually took what was for him. And Rachel, <laughs> the loved one, you see, not because she was the chosen one means that she is not um incapable of making mistakes <laughs> rachel went and stole from her father right uh, so that goes to show how we as humans need to get to that understanding that we need to separate the sin from the sinner it's a really important thing for us to learn as christians it's hard the hardest thing it's hard for me too but you have to understand that each and every one of us are being heavily influenced by the devil and heavily influenced by the Spirit of God, right? We have a choice, and it is so easy to weigh in the part of the devil. It's so easy to go, in, go on the side of the devil. I have fallen so many times right but what i'm telling you is that i look at myself and i think that's why you know god still allows me to do something right to show me that i need to be merciful right because i'm also a sinner right and uh, when we get to understand that you are just as fallible as the person that upset you, made you angry, or did the worst to you, then you can look at them and you know what? Okay, you're just as, sorry if you get offended by this word, probably you're just as stupid as I am to make the wrong decision, so yeah. Or you're just as sinner as I am to make the wrong decision. I like to be wrong and plain. I don't necessarily like to pretty up things, right? I'm very direct. So that's why I said it's stupid. But yeah, um, we can look at them and be like, you know what, fine, I made mistakes too. I can be merciful. And once you get to practice understanding that, it will become a, a bit easier as time progresses to, to separate the sin from the sinner, right? And so, separate sin from the sinner. God is your friend that will be with you regardless of what you do. God is going to take care of you. And we ought to exhibit those kind of traits that God is exhibiting towards us so we can be merciful towards others. And I actually forgot the first thing that I said to you. Just go back. But yes, those are our lessons for this week. And that is part one of... Um, three for Genesis 31 and uh, next week we'll go into Laban pursues Jacob right yeah we're all in, we're all fallible so let's not think that oh family members can't deceive each other that's what I was about to say or that's what I said at first never exclude family members from those people that 
are out there to do it um ill against you okay um that is our bible study for this week i'll see you on sunday for sunday song spotlight guys bye bye have a great day Hey guys, I hope you guys enjoyed today's encouragement and I hope you guys are ready for the day ahead. Now do me a favor and press that like button and subscribe button if you are new so that we can get more of this positive Christian content out into the world, okay? And I'll link my daily devotional playlist right here and my Let's Talk playlist if you want to tackle some social issues, okay? So have a great day guys. Bye-bye.